And good morning once again. Take a few moments, greet those around you, introduce yourself if you see a new face. Today is the fifth Sunday after the Epiphany, and mission festivals are usually in the fall. Today, the lessons have pretty much a mission festival theme as we hear Isaiah hear the call of God, and he says, here am I, send me. St. Paul talks about the message of God and how can people believe unless there's people are sent to them with the message. And we see Jesus calling his disciples and telling them they're going to fish for people. Our opening hymn is number 483. Our order for worship is the service, setting two, beginning on page 172. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just, and will forgive us our sins, and purify us from all unrighteousness. Let us confess our sins to the Lord. Holy God, gracious Father, I am sinful by nature 
and have sinned against you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have not loved you with my whole heart. I have not loved others as I should. I deserve your punishment both now and forever. But Jesus, my Savior, paid for my sins with his innocent suffering and death. Trusting in him, I pray, God have mercy on me, a sinner. Our gracious Father in heaven has been merciful to us. He sent his only Son, Jesus Christ, who gave his life as the atoning sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ, and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, you call and appoint us to proclaim the good news of your Son despite our sins and weaknesses. Purify us by your grace, remove our uncertainties, and work through us to fill the nets of your kingdom with those lost in the darkness of death. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The first reading is from the sixth chapter of Isaiah. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and exalted, with the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him stood the seraphim. Each one had six wings. With two they covered their faces. With two they covered their feet. With two they flew. One called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of armies. The whole earth is full of his glory. The foundations of the thresholds shook at the voice of the one who called, and the temple was filled with smoke. Then I said, I am doomed, I am ruined, because I am a man with unclean lips, and I dwell among a people with unclean lips. And because my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of armies. Then one of the seraphim flew to me, carrying a glowing coal in his hand, which he had taken from the altar with tongs. He touched my mouth with the coal and said, Look, this has touched your lips, so your guilt is taken away, and your sin is forgiven. Then I heard the Lord's voice saying, Whom shall I send? Who will go for us? Then I said, Here I am. Send me. The word of the Lord. We sing Psalm 67.
The second reading is from the 10th chapter of Romans. So there is no distinction between Jew and Greek because the same Lord is Lord of all who gives generously to all who call on him. Yes, everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. So then, how can they call on the one they have not believed in? And how can they believe in the one about whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without a preacher? And how can they preach unless they are sent? Just as it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news of peace, who preach the gospel of good things. But not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah says, Lord, who believed our message? So then faith comes from hearing the message, and the message comes through the word of Christ. The word of the Lord. Please rise. Gospel according to St. Luke, the fifth chapter. One time, while the crowd was pressing in on Jesus and listening to the word of God, he was standing by the lake of Gennesaret, and that's just another name for the Sea of Galilee. He saw two boats there along the lake shore. The fishermen had left them and were washing their nets. Jesus got into one of the boats, which belonged to Simon and asked him to put out a little from the shore. He sat down and began teaching the crowds from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into the deep water and let down your nets for a catch. Simon answered him, Master, we worked hard all through the night and caught nothing, but at your word I will let down the nets. When they had done this, they caught a great number of fish and their nets were about to tear apart. They signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them. They came and filled both boats so that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw this, he fell down at Jesus' knees saying, go away from me because I am a sinful man, Lord. For Peter and all those with him were amazed at the number of fish they had caught. And so were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. Jesus said to Simon, Have no fear. From now on you will be catching people. After they brought their nets to the shore, they left everything and followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated, and the children's choir will sing, I want to walk as a child of the light.
Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, your brothers and sisters in him. St. Paul had to be the hardest working person in the early church. If you look in the back of many Bibles, you'll see a series of maps, and one of them will probably be the journeys of Paul, and you can see those colored lines showing where he zigzagged across the Mediterranean Sea and traveled into Turkey and Greece, possibly made an earlier trip to Rome. I would imagine Paul was a guy who was always thinking of, where can I go next? Where can I preach the gospel next? Who haven't we reached? In the last chapters of Romans, Paul wrote about wanting to go to Spain. We're not sure if he ever got there. And then Paul, in the first chapter of Romans, talks about wanting to go to visit those Roman Christians. But he couldn't. And here we see a little bit of Romans 8.28 in action, God making all things work out for good. Paul couldn't visit the Romans, so what did he have to do? He had to write a letter. And that's the next great piece of Paul's busyness and Paul's work was writing. He wrote about two-thirds of the New Testament. And he wrote this letter to the Romans, and what a letter that was. It's a very doctrinal letter. It covers every major doctrine in the Bible with a special emphasis on how we are justified, judged as righteous through Jesus. It is a very practical letter, and it is also a very pastoral letter. I think of how many times I'm visiting a family that's lost a loved one, or talking with somebody who's gone through some other great loss, and what do I always turn to? Romans 8, 28. All things work together for good to those who love God. And the pa passages that follow that. What can separate us from the love of God? If God is for us, who can be against us? Paul had several tasks in mind as he wrote this letter to the Romans. One came from his knowledge of that Roman congregation. He knew that some of the people in that congregation had a Jewish background, and others had a previous Roman pagan background. And he knew what happens when you have two distinct groups trying to come together. The Jewish Christians might have said, we have the heritage from Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We're the chosen people, and you're just newcomers. We're special. We're the original ones. And then the Roman Christians might have either thought we're inferior because of that attitude, or they might have thought we're new, we're fresh, we're a clean slate. We're not old and stuffy like those other people. So what does Paul do? He first tells them, we're all alike. We're all alike under sin. The Jewish people received God's commandments from the top of Mount Sinai. And when Moses was bringing down those tablets with the commandments inscribed on them, what did he see? He saw them breaking the very first commandment, worshiping a golden calf. And the rest of Israel's history 
is full of instances where God sent a prophet and the people didn't listen. We even saw that in that short quote that Paul made from Isaiah. Who has believed our message? And then the Gentiles, they had the law of conscience. God's law written in their hearts, something all people have. Maybe conscience isn't always as reliable, it's not as distinct, sometimes not as clear as God's written law, but it's still something. And did the other nations always follow their conscience? No, they didn't. World history, and especially Roman history, is full of cruelty. And we think of stories of the Roman emperors living it up, living high, while their people suffered, oppressing people, ruling with fear and force, no, Jews and Gentiles are alike under sin. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And all are justified freely by God's grace. And that's where Paul begins this section in Romans 10, where he says, there's no distinction between Jew and Greek because the same Lord is Lord of all who gives generously to all who call on him. Yes, everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. When we learned the second commandment, you shall not misuse God's name, or the line of the Lord's prayer, hallowed be your name, we learned that God's name is not just words and titles that we use when we're calling on God, but it's also everything God reveals about himself. Everything that God gives us to give us an image of him in our hearts and minds. God's name is very much the same as God's word. And without it, we're in complete darkness. Again, in the Catechism, we learned, I believe I cannot, by my own thinking or choosing, believe in Jesus Christ, my Lord, or come to him, but the Holy Spirit has called me by the gospel and enlightened me with his gifts. That's exactly what Paul says at the end of our reading. Faith comes from hearing the message, and the message is heard through the word of Christ. Paul is very distinct about the message and about the faith, all focused on Christ. You've probably heard me say this before, that word believe and the related word faith those both need a little definition in our time because you walk into a card shop, our hallmark is closed now, but you walk into a card shop or a craft store and you often see a wall hanging that says, Believe. I used to know a radio host and he'd close every broadcast by saying, Keep the faith. Well, believe what? Keep what faith? Believe and faith are words that cannot really stand on their own. I do know what that wall hanging believe means. It means be optimistic. Optimistic, that means you're hoping for the best. And sometimes things do turn out all right, but many times 
Many times things take unexpected turns, bad turns. That floating belief, that floating faith, well, that's an uncertain thing. You have to believe a message, believe in something, believe in someone. Faith comes from hearing the message. The message is heard through the word of Christ. That is the specific belief. That is the specific faith that God wants us to have, that Paul is talking about here. How can people believe without somebody preaching to them? And what is that faith? What is the goal of that faith? Well, we see that in another of Paul's tasks as he writes his letter to the Romans. He was also preparing them for what was about to happen. Our best guess is that St. Paul wrote the letter to the Romans around the year 58 in that first century. And a few years later, in the year 64, was when the Emperor Nero unleashed some heavy persecution on those Roman Christians. You claim that you worship a king named Jesus, there is no king but the Roman emperor. Renounce this Jesus or die. Renounce this Jesus or lose your property. What did Paul write to them? Also in Romans 8, what can separate us from the love of God that is ours in Christ Jesus our Lord? Shall trouble or hardship or nakedness or danger or sword? No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. That phrase, more than conquerors, that was Paul's roundabout way of saying you're more than conquerors, more than the Roman culture of conquering, more than the emperor who wants to conquer you more than all his soldiers because you have the love of God. You have the love of God through Christ. And with that, you can face anything, even an insane emperor and all his troops bent on conquest. You have that word and promise of Jesus himself because I live, you will live also. Those who live and believe in me will never die. Those who believe in me, I will raise them up at the last day. Do not let your heart be troubled. I go to prepare a place for you. This is what God richly gives to those who call on him a message of hope, a heavenly hope, but it also gives us earthly strength too as we face hardships and losses day after day. We know that through it all, there is something we will not lose. God's love, God's promise, because he has richly given that to us in Jesus. The word of Christ is about heavenly hope and about earthly endurance. One of the Psalms says, where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. There are millions who live without hope. We look at the mood in our country and in our world. Everything is on edge. It's not very hopeful. Peter tells us, always give reason 
always be ready to give reason for the hope that you have with gentleness and respect. Who do you know living without hope? Who can you invite? Who can you encourage? Who can you uplift? Who can you share that hope with? Who can you invite back to worship after this long, strange exile called COVID? The hope is there for all. That's part of the message, too. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. All are justified freely by God's grace. Above some of our doors here in the church, there is a sign that says, you are now entering your mission field. Just as the Lord seated on his throne called out, whom shall I send? Isaiah said, here am I, send me, admitting I'm a man of unclean lips. Paul, yes, one of the hardest workers in the early church with his journeys, with his writing, with his preaching. How did he start out as someone who is intent on stamping out Christianity? And Jesus' first disciples, a bunch of fishermen, probably roughneck fishermen, sent out to catch people. He could use them. He can use you. He can use me. Amen. Please rise. We confess our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed on page 181. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated for the prayer of the church. The prayer of the church begins on page three in the service folder. God, be gracious to us and bless us and make your face shine on us. Shine through us that the ends of the earth may fear you. Holy, holy, holy are you, Lord Almighty. The whole earth is full of your glory. You richly and daily bless all who call on you. Bless our daily work, whatever it might be. Give us skill in our professions, success in our tasks, and provide for our needs and for the needs of others as we do useful work to your glory. Holy, holy, holy are you, Lord Almighty. The whole earth is full of your glory. Faith comes from hearing the message. Send your messengers throughout the world to bring the word about Christ to those who do not know it, or have not heard it. Holy, holy, holy are you, Lord Almighty. The whole earth is full of your glory. Bless all who share your message. Give them willingness and joy as they fish for people and build them up in faith. Holy, holy, holy are you, Lord Almighty. The whole earth is full of your glory. 
Lead and support the people who volunteer in our congregation, those who serve on councils, boards, committees, and support organizations. Feed their faith with your word, strengthen them for service, and make them a blessing for your people and for your work. Holy, holy, holy are you, Lord Almighty. The whole earth is full of your glory. Exalted Lord, you look kindly upon the lowly. Though you are on high, you see their troubles from afar. Look on those who are in trouble and those who struggle with health or pain. Preserve their lives, help and save them with your right hand. Holy, holy, holy are you, Lord Almighty. The whole earth is full of your glory. Hear us, Lord, as we bring you our private petitions. Lord God, we humbly thank you that you have spread abroad the word of your gospel over the whole world and have showered your grace upon us. Uphold us by the teaching of your holy apostles and give us your Holy Spirit that we grow and remain in him through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We continue with hymn 907. Blessed Lord, you have given us your holy scriptures for our learning. May we so hear them, 
read, learn, and take them to heart, that being strengthened and comforted by your holy word, we may cling to the blessed hope of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. You may be seated for the closing hymn. All of the announcements are on the news sheet and the bulletin. Uh, one thing to highlight, this is February, along with Valentine's Day. Something we do at St. Stephen's is we have our annual marriage seminar. That's the last Saturday of this month. If you are getting married or plan on getting married, this is for you. If you want a refresher, on uh, the basics of marriage and what Scripture says. This is for you, too. Uh, Sign-up sheets are by the ramp and on the table by the TV in the back. God's blessings on your week. Stay warm and stay healthy. <laughs>